Well, here we are. It is another week of indoor football. It is come. It is gone. Man, I got to tell you, this week was indeed spicy, a very spicy week of games, you know. Um, let me tell you, first things first, Cedar Rapids, you know, they were supposed to play up one, you know, up one athletic uh, showcase who's going to play Wichita this week. They're going to play the Wichita Regulators. Um, I am attempting to find some more information from up one themselves because they've said that they arrived at the arena and they were like, Hey, we're going to play this game at eight 30, but the arena apparently said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. So something must have happened either up one arrived at the arena and then something happened or maybe they didn't, but a lot of, a lot of people were going with the first part is that they were not at the arena. And so I tried to ask them, I tried to ask them to come on and say, Hey, clear the air for me, clear the air for us about, because this has been an ongoing thing with Don Montero and Sea Rapids, you know, who are basically about to split, you know, basically we will have the River Kings, the Don Montero side, and then the Cedar Rapids power. Anthony Bartley has been very vocal, you know, about how, the rest of the River Kings organization has done things. So they played an exhibition game against themselves, basically. So the, so the River Kings, and it was 26 to 14. But again, that's not the game we came for. That's not the game we came to talk about. It was, it's, it's a crazy situation that, again, I, I do need some more answers. And I'm trying to get some more answers. I may contact Anthony Bartley myself and get him on to see what in the world, you know, what in the world's really going on here because there's a lot, I know there's a lot that he has to say. And I know I, and I'm going to let him speak his mind on, on my platform if he wants to, but that's totally up to him as far as that goes, you know, because there's probably going to be a split like, you know, like the whole Iowa rampage and Coralville chaos thing. That's kind of what happened to the, with the AFL team. It was a split and Topeka too, technically. So yeah. So the AFL decided to cancel all their week 10 games except for Washington and Wichita, which Wichita won that game against Washington. They got a deal with CBS Sports Network again to televise playoff games. But the bad part is they put the Arena Bowl inside of a mall, the American Dream Center in East Rutherford, New Jersey. That's the bad part. How in the world this is going to work? I have no idea. It's a stupid idea, I'll tell you that much, because there used to be a pro women's hockey team that's played in a in that mall. And yeah, it was yeah, it's rough. It's rough. Um I, I genuinely am completely and utterly shocked at this revelation of information, but yet again. You know, this does not surprise me. <laughs> There's been some cost cutting and cheapness going on here. And I don't think the transition to power, you know, has helped as much as, you know, a lot of people said it did. It really, really has not changed the perception of the league all that much because the team still folded. And games, you know, were, you know, just kind of, you know, doing their, you know, things kind of just going along. But not in a good way, though. So yeah, CBS Sports Network is back in the fold. That may be a good thing, but the downside, the Arena Bowl, the seed better day is it really should have been played at the home arena of whoever is the home team. Of course, six of the eight teams make it now to the five. So there's that. So you know, playoff format changed like 90 times this year. So that's kind of funny. On the other hand, the AIF released Beaumont, who has been linked to an article stating that they'll be going to the NAL, but right now we don't have any right now we don't know anything until until Beaumont says something, until the NAL says something, we'll wait, we'll wait and see about that. But I don't know yet. You know, I'm not 
I already went to Beaumont once. I'm not going to, you know, go, go back down there again anytime soon. But Cedar Rapids being released is really just kind of a long time coming. John Morris also resigned, which, as we all know, is a stain on the indoor arena football industry. It does not matter what you say. You cannot deny how bad he was for the game. He was bad for the game. I mean, look at this year. DIF, for example, it was bad. It was still a bad year, regardless of how the AI had finished with Columbus winning the title in a game that, you know, was kind of competitive for like maybe a half. But yeah, Columbus still won the title. So the shady guys still do shady things. So it's kind of, it's really kind of rough. So on to the Arena League. Um, Ozarks, they beat Kansas City in Ozarks. Kansas City had to move their game. There were some more issues with their arena. The Iowa Woo won their first game against Duluth, which is very surprising. So, on to the IFL. Well, let me tell you. That's some good stuff from the IFL yet again. Of course, Monday night, the game that capped us off was the Quad City, Massachusetts game, and Massachusetts has clinched a playoff spot. Green Bay has clinched a home field game, and so has Frisco with a walk-off victory over the San Antonio Gunslickers. And one hell of a game. I mean, what a duel. That Green Bay dominated Tulsa like it was nobody's business. And, yeah, that was, that was real fun, wasn't it? That was real fun. Uh, Dave Morn, you know, that new that news of him, you know, having a heart attack. Hope he is, you know, resting well and, you know, recovering, you know, nicely. Usually, again, I usually don't, you know, do shout outs like that on here uh, because I care more about the games and, you know, the players and stuff like that, you know, and not about outside issues that don't have anything to do with the game themselves. Not, not saying that. You know, it's that, but saying, you know, heart attack is a serious thing. So, you know, it's kind of hard really to talk about it. So, um, in any case, in any case, Jacksonville and Sioux Falls, I believe, are eliminated from playoff contention, you know, with the Massachusetts win. I know. I think they're eliminated. Let me check that real quick because I don't remember at all. So, oh, uh, yeah, Jacksonville approved a little bit. They 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 got a win. Duke City also got a win, which you know I'm more disappointed in Tucson each and every week. He really is disappointing to watch the Tucson Sugar Skulls play football. Just it's just it's just not fun to watch. Um, Caffeine shut down too, by the way. So, yeah. The IFL didn't really talk about caffeine after like the first two or three weeks anyway. So, you know, it was kind of to be expected. It was another streaming service that really didn't make any sense. Um, so, yeah, Sioux Falls is eliminated from playoff contention. Because Tulsa. And so all the all Massachusetts need to do was win. Bay Area beat Vegas, um, so they've clinched the playoff spots. So we got what four teams that have clinched playoff spots now. So Bay Area on the west side, and Massachusetts, Green Bay, and Frisco on the east. So the fight for that final Eastern. Conference playoff spot is really going to be interesting. When you get Quad Cities, going to be six and seven after this. Tulsa five and nine. Uh, Iowa five and nine. Jacksonville still technically in this thing, and Sioux Falls is not. And meanwhile, in the West, um, Bay Area, Vegas, San Diego, Arizona, Northern Arizona, and San Antonio. You know, San Antonio six and seven now but they're still fighting for a playoff spot themselves. So, yeah, it's going to be one interesting finish. There are three weeks left 
the IFL season. There are three weeks left. So, you know, playoffs will begin probably July the 27th, maybe July 26th. I don't know, but Frisco's clinched the playoff spot. So that might be a Saturday, uh, even more so a Saturday, you know, they're like Green Bay. I think Green, Green Bay might have like a – Green Bay will probably have a Saturday game too, I hope. So I hope, uh, hope you know, it's probably all going to be Saturday, maybe a Sunday game in there, maybe a Friday game. I don't know what's what, but we'll see when that time comes. As we're getting much, much closer to the end. Um you know, we're halfway through the Arena League's inaugural season, and it's actually going very well. They're keeping track of stuff. They're doing, you know, they're doing their thing. Um, AIF, you know, again, honestly, at this point, you know, with the way things have gone, I just hope the league dissolves and never, we never have to hear American indoor football ever again. I do not, I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of this nonsense, uh, you know. Columbus is saying, no, nah, we're not going back to the NAL. Not right now, you know, anything, anything like that. So a lot of these teams need to just, just it, it's, it's, it, I, I've said this for a couple of seasons now, you know, we need more quality arena leagues, not less. We don't need six or seven divided up and everything like that. Like we could have, you know, a league like an FCF where there's, you know, Seven on seven. We can have a league like the Arena League, you know, Tim Brown's Arena League, where it's six on six. We can have stuff like that. We can have, you know, Mike Ditka and the um, the former um, Lingerie Football League, now called the X League. We can have, you know, a women's indoor football league. We can have that. But at the end of the day, we need we need these teams to start coming together, you know. And, and I've gone back and forth, you know, with some people on this too. We do not need outdoor, outdoor arenas. Are you serious? It's called indoor football. It's called arena football. It's called indoors. It's called inside of an arena. <laughs> We're not playing this game outdoors. Well, and I mean by an arena, I mean an arena that is regulation size, not a soccer plex, not a warehouse. Not a field that's not even close to regulation length. We're talking indoor football. We're talking arena football. We're not talking about this other nonsense that this lower tier nonsense has. There's a reason why there's still these disgusting, you know, you know, fall leagues that play in soccer plexes for some reason. You know, like why do these teams still exist sometimes? Like there's just no reason, you know, and I get it. You know, it's to f- get film, try to move on up, or trying to play for the love of the game. But at the end of the day, there has to be a point where this needs to stop. It needs to stop. So, like, this year has been one of the craziest years, and I think we're going to have an even crazier offseason. I think we're going to have a pretty crazy offseason. I don't think it'll go to the lengths that it did this past offseason, the 2023-2024 offseason. But the 2024-2025 offseason, I think things will get pretty interesting. So there's that, you know. Like the NA is at six. The IFL is going to be at 18, question mark. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm still not sold on Dakota. I'm sorry. Not, I'm not sold on them yet. I need, I need to see a little bit more. You know, the IFL is not going to put it out themselves. So I need Dakota to step up themselves. So the, some of the Dakota Bucks, y'all need to step up your game. I ain't seen nothing. So, and everybody needs to step up their Twitter game too. Like, like the IFL is doing, you know, they're doing their thing on Twitter, but I need everybody to step up the Twitter game. There's no reason. There's literally no reason at this point that teams have not stepped up the Twitter game. I, I don't understand. Why are we still using Facebook, man? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't be just, you know, messaging people on Facebook, man. This, you know, you know how annoying Facebook is? It's really annoying. And I've gone off on a tangent, so that'll do it for me. Um, catch you all back here on Sunday after the conclusion of the three games on Sunday. I believe there's three games, three IFL games on Sunday, so can't wait to talk to you after all that is done. Uh, that's about it. Aside from our three announcements to have, you know, you know, come 
there are three announcements that have come. Um, you're going to do as much as I can to get the to finally make this channel, you know, a little bit more diverse as far as you know the gaming aspect goes. The podcast will be coming back in September as well, so I'm excited. I'm ready, ready to make the investment to do what I need to do to make this channel even bigger. So y'all take care. I'll see you all on Sunday night at about about eight eight o'clock eight thirty somewhere around that time so good night and hope you have a good you know fourth of july week yeah